Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you can see pictures of all the patterns I have available and possibly get one for yourself to knit up. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. Um, it isn't like a crazy busy group, but it's there so we can continue the conversation of anything that I talk about here on Watch Barbara Knit and also share pictures. It's a closed group, so you'll have to request that I let you in and I'll be happy to do so. I'd love to have you come over and chat with me. And it might be a particularly good thing uh, today because, you know, this is a chatty kind of thing because it is my October blog. Vlog, blog, whatever. <laughs> so, um, Got a few things to talk to you about, and a lot of it is stuff I can't really talk to you about. I have been super busy for the month of September. I went to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, and you can see the videos from that, and I met a lot of you, and that was absolutely fantastic. I I did make good on my threat and I hugged quite a few people when they told me that they watched my videos, and it was super fun to meet y'all. And... I have been knitting up a storm, but one of the idiosyncrasies of being a knitwear designer is I have three things on the needles right now. Well, one's blocking over there, but three things that I'm working on that I can't show you because when you work in collaboration with someone else, um, you can't... <laughs> You can't show off what you're doing. It needs to be a surprise for some reason or another. You just have to play your cards a little close to your chest. So I just want to let you know, I have been working on stuff. It's just stuff that I can't show you. It's exciting stuff. I, I'm I'm super excited to, to show it to you when I get the chance. Um, one thing I did definitely mention in the last vlog that I want to talk to you about is that I will be going to New York Sheep and Wool in only a couple of weeks. Um, let me look at my planner. I've got it written in here. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Okay, look at this. Look at this giant mess of a planner. So I am leaving on Thursday the 19th and New York Sheep and Wool is the 20th and the 22nd of October. And if you have not gone to New York Sheep and Wool, um, it is actually worth the trip. It is a huge fiber festival full of absolutely amazing things and amazing people and it's so much fun and the way that my friends and I go is that we actually rent a house you go on Airbnb or through whatever service you want and if you have a group of people you can split up the nightly cost between these multiple people and then it can be considerably cheaper I am paying less to stay there for what one two three four I'm paying less to stay there for four nights than I would for two nights in a hotel. So if you're considering going up, I highly recommend looking into renting a house. And if that is something you're looking at, so you would need to start looking for a house like at the end of October because people who rent the houses consistently um, start renting them right after they leave because it is a huge deal. And like, there's a huge number of people in the area that are there just to go to New York sheep and wool because it is just that awesome. There is all the yarn and then there's the animals and llamas and alpacas and sheepies, but then it's at like a fairground. So you also have amazing food vendors and people go crazy over the cider donuts. And then there's this thing called artichoke French, which I have never tried, but apparently they take like a whole artichoke and like deep fry it. And then there's a section where it's foods of upstate New York and you get to walk through and it's amazing. And there was a cheese vendor and I ate like like so many apples. <laughs> I love apples and I ate so many apples. It was fabulous. So really, if you can have an opportunity at least once in your knitting life, I highly recommend going. And I'm talking about this because I, 
I'm going to have a different experience at, at Rhinebeck this year because... I will not be running around quite as much as I normally do because I will be sitting in the area of Building B signing my book. So exciting! So I'll be in Building B on both Saturday and Sunday. And I'm there from 9.30 to noon. And then I'm there from 1.30 to 4.30 on both days. There's a little chunk out of the middle because even I got to eat. And also, I love going to the Ravelry meetup that is right there in that center. That 12 to 1 chunk is usually when the Ravelry meetup is and it's on the hill. And if you go to Rhinebeck, ask anyone where the hill is and they'll tell you it's this slope that is where the Ravelry gathering is. And a whole bunch of people from Ravelry show up there and they usually take a group picture. It is so much fun. And I'm going to be there on both days. So if by chance you're interested in meeting me and aren't going to come to get a book signed, please track me down on the hill. That would be so much fun to meet everybody. Um, I don't know if we want to make a plan, like a specific place we want to meet. If people are interested, that's something we can talk about in the comments below or over on the Facebook group or in my Ravelry group or whatever you want to do. But it would be super fun to see y'all. So Rhinebeck, yay! Saturday and Sunday, Building B, and what it is is you go into the building and you go to the back of the building and it's like back on like the right hand side and it's where all the book signings are. There's going to be all kinds of really amazing authors signing things and me too. So I would love to have you come see me. If you haven't gotten the book, you can pick up the book and I'll be happy to sign it. I'm so excited about that. So that's Rhinebeck. Um, I have gotten... I've been, as I told you, I've been working on some new stuff and I thought you might want to have a little look of it. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> Don't even bother trying to zoom in on this because it has changed since then. I just wanted you guys to see the giant mess that I make when I am working. I actually, if you've seen one of my patterns, this might look familiar. I, um, in my patterns, I put the pattern here and then I have this sidebar because whenever I knit I like to scribble all over stuff and sometimes there's little check boxes in here so you can check off repeated rows but as you can see I have written all over this and again it's changed drastically since this it's a giant mess but I try to write everything out so I'm working from the same instructions that you will be working from when you buy my pattern so I do my best the other thing I got, ooh, in the mail, super exciting. I have my new Hobonichi for next year. I'm ready to be all plantertated in the next year. I haven't opened it up because, well, it's not 2018 yet, but I'm excited. I'm ready. I will be swapping it out into here, and it'll be awesome. Now, they always come with the Hobonichi always comes with a special prize, a, a gift. And this is this year's gift. Um, it is, you always get a pen. This is last year's pen. This is this year's pen. Was blue, now yellow. <laughs> but they're pretty much the same pen, just a slightly different color. Um, this one has the the date on here and this one has it on here. That's pretty much the only difference, but I use it a lot. It's a lot of fun. And then the gift in addition to those is this. And you guys have got to see this. This is hysterical. So there's these little tiny dice. See? Well, the regular size dice, which are in general small. And <laughs> okay. So what you got is this is for cooking. So if you look here, ooh, let me cover my eyes. See, it says deep fry. And then we have a side that says stir fry in, in English and Japanese. So you got stir fry, simmer, steam, the favorite, raw. And then this one, look, it's got an egg. And what's that? Oh, it's a fish. And this is a cow. <laughs> and a chicken and vegetables. So what? Oh, I forgot to show you the cute pig. Hello, pig. <laughs> 
So what you do is if you don't know what to make for dinner, you take your dice and you roll them and it tells you what to do. So let's see what I should do for dinner. So apparently for supper, I need to have deep fried vegetables. Did that go in focus? There we go. Deep fried vegetables. How fun is that? Now, uh, something that has been pointed out by quite a few people is there's one rather unfortunate, um, the raw option if paired with chicken could be inadvisable. Not sure about raw pork. Um, but it's fun. It's a cute little thing, isn't it? I thought I'd show that to you guys. I actually got in with my friend Heather to make a big order because I was only wanting the the new planner and it cost a little bit shipping and I wanted to show you. So Heather was super awesome and she sent me additional items in the package. And so look at this. Isn't it cute? It's this little tiny pencil case and look at what's in it <laughs> it's a bunny it's a bunny pen look at that and look it's got a uh, a pen um prophylactic i guess to make sure that the ink doesn't come out but it's got a cute little bunny and i am excited i am cool i love this little tin i wonder hmm Ah, foiled again. No, not quite long enough for DPNs, but I bet I could put, hang on, I got it. Here's this, Brittany. Nope, not long enough for DPNs, but I bet I could put like other things in it. I, maybe a crochet hook. Hmm, do I have any crochet hooks around? I don't normally. Oh, nope, 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 nope. There's one. <laughs> you guys like looking at the back of my head, sorry. <gasps> yes! Can you see it? Look, crochet hooks fit. So I think this could be also useful. I know she sent it to me as a as a planner thing, but I think this could be useful. I know that people love the Altoid tins, but I like the shape of this. And it actually could hold what I feel is one of the most valuable tools that you can have in your knitting bag. An emery board. Oh, yep, it fit. So if I could stick like an emery board and a crochet hook and some it, look at that. That's awesome. Totally going to stay in there. I could put some stitch markers in there. So I love little things to put other little things into and my cute little pen. Thank you very much, Heather. What else did I want to talk to you about? Um, I guess I could show you a couple swatches. I have swatches laying all over my desk. Um, Here's this one. What do you think of that, guys? That kind of cool. It's a real basic mosaic lace that I was playing with um, just to see what it would do. Very simple. See, it's just got the Vs. Well, I got real close to the mic. I hope it didn't get too loud. And here's another one. And I can't decide on this one which side I like better. Do I like it this way? Or do I like it that? I kind of like it this way. I think it looks like um, garlands, you know, uh, like during the holidays when you'd sw swag um, evergreen boughs, you know, I don't know, garlands or um, in birthday parties when you do bunting. But yeah. Oh, what are you doing in my way? There we go. Love to hear what you guys think of that. If you can visualize what these, I spend a lot of my time doing swatches and one of the most challenging things for me is to figure out what those swatches want to be when they grow up. So that something else I've been playing with is the reason why she's back here. This is Till There Was You, which is a semicircle shawl that I designed in Crater Lake. It's a beautiful bulky yarn from Stitch Sprouts, but I've been playing with it and this one's not quite big enough, but if you see, I have used some waste yarn to attach it. You can see there's, I don't know if you can see it, the lights. I put some green yarn and the idea that's kicking around in my head is that I can knit something like a semicircle, but then if I do some fancy tricks in bind off, it can become 
a shrug. I got to pull it down in the back. There we go. I mean, this one's just kind of cobbled together, but what do you guys think? Let me see if I can see it. Look, what do you think? I'm going to turn around. Do, 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 do. What do you think? You think a, uh, a half circle shawl that could also be a shrug is an interesting idea? I don't know. Well, you know, it'd have to be like either you finish it as a half circle shawl or you finish it as a shrug. You couldn't do both because once it's bound off, it's going to be bound off. But I think, I think it has potential. Look at me. I look like a chicken. Bok, bok, bok. But I'd love to hear you guys' thought on this particular thing I've been noodling with. Um, I love half circle shawls. I love constructing them. But also, I like shrugs. So who knows? Okay. So I have rambled on for my allotted time. I hope that if you are going to be at New York Sheep and Wool in Rhinebeck, New York, that you come and see me. I would love to hear from you in the comments below or on Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group. If you have any thoughts or comments on anything that I chatted about, October is going to be a very, very exciting month. I have so much to get done. And then November is going to be even more interesting. So, if you like this video, please click that like button, give it the thumbs up, and if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.